Hey everybody, what a beautiful day it is today. It's like a shockingly beautiful day. Um, I have just one thing I wanna talk about. So Jack Kerouac came up a lot this morning and I just wanted to tell you about the places that I found Jack Kerouac's name. Um, typically I think of Jack Kerouac as a, as a writer that uh, me, my set and I don't really think about that often, but this, this morning a bunch of reminders cropped up and I wanna show you where they cropped up. So I've been reading this book, You and I, A True Story Out Loud. Of course, I love this book. You know, I'm a bit of a collector of books by this This author. is the Madison Public Library copy of the book. Um, I really like the cover. I think this is like what the hardcover looked like and they just made the paperback look like this. Anyway, here around page 66, there's this nice page where it's talking about um, uh, Harold Bloom's Anxiety of Influence as it intersects with this book and in, and and, uh, and has inspired this book. Uh, he, uh, in this in this section, Nicholson Baker mis, misremembers how Updike talks about Kerouac, says, um, blah, 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 and being so forthright about this, I have to admit to feeling slightly superior to Updike, who surprised an early interviewer by naming Jack Kerouac as an inspiration. Actually, he merely said, so these, these things in brackets, are, um, are things where he, I think he's correcting the record. He's setting the record straight. He'll leave in things that he misremembers and then <laughs> just like say that he was wrong, but leave the wrong thing in. Um, actually, he merely said uh, that of his contemporaries, Kerouac, quote, attempted to grab it all, somehow to grab it all. I like him. Kerouac said the interviewer in effect, just as Updike wanted him to, how interesting. Um, and then there, there's, there's, there's a uh, more funny stuff about this and, and more neurosis detailing that makes this passage fun. So I, I was, I was kind of not expecting to get that mention of Updike, uh, or sorry, of Kerouac there. Going to replace this, this bookmark that has some um, stabs on it. And then later I found myself at the book and record store because I'm that kind of person, you know. Um, one thing I found at that store was this Chester Himes novel, The Heat's On. Um, it was in the exact same place where I found that great The High Window you know, uh, book uh, earlier. And I loved reading that so much. And it was in this um, series. Um, and uh, it just felt like an, an omen. It felt like a sign that I should really get this. And also, um, as has been pointed out to me, the copy on the back is written very well. This seems really exciting. And I can't wait to read it. Um, the other book that I got there was this um, Ann Waldman book. Um, so you know that I read that Graham Greene Dream Diary a, a bit ago. Well, because I really enjoyed that, I was also looking for Burroughs' Dream Diary called My Education. It seems like a book I used to be able to find everywhere, but it's it's been strangely elusive lately. But in that Beat, poet, beat Poets... Sorry, the... Uh, uh, the uh, in the um, you know assorted beat poets section of the bookstore, I saw this familiar name, a poet I really love, Ann Waldman, Kill or Cure, a great title, and this very attractive spine, super well done, a Penguin Poet series book of hers, and I had to grab it. And in this book I found, um, just while paging through and admiring the different uh, kinds of poems that are in here, I found dreams. Ann Waldman really came through. Um, I found this Jack Kerouac dream. In this dream, I guess you could pause the video and just read the whole dream if you want. Um, in this dream, she has lots of good um, direct quotes of what Jack Kerouac said in her dream, which is always inestimably valuable. So, you know, Kerouac showed up again. And then one of the CDs I got today um, was this Sonny Rollins CD. Um, I've been meaning to listen to uh, this guy a lot more. And um, one thing I noticed while looking at the booklet um, that was slotted into the jewel case was this sentence here. Um, men like Mort, or this, this thing here, men like Mort Saul and Erwin Corey, who in their respective categories may well be the two funniest men alive. This was written in like 1957 to accompany the original selection from these sessions, these, uh, these recordings. And Jack Kerouac, whose occasionally jazz-tinted adventures in his novel On the Road led to his employment at the Vanguard, reading some of his own writings to a jazz background. 
So, um, I've been, I guess I've been orbiting around Jack Kerouac strangely all morning and just wanted to share uh, not only that that w had happened because I thought it was curious, but also to show some of the cool um, um, objects, the cu cool works of art where I found him mentioned.